Today, we are discussing the impact of setting boundaries and asserting yourself as the she boss that you are. Have you ever felt like being too nice in business is holding you back? Damn! Well, I feel you because that used to be me too, believe it or not. I was 100% of the time a people pleaser when it came to my career. But in this video, I'm going to share with you my personal journey on how being overly nice did not get me very far and the valuable lessons that I have learned along the way. Let's get to work. C -B -C -C -B. First, we need to discuss the challenges of being too nice and being overly accommodating and being a people pleaser. And if you think that you know all the challenges, then I probably would challenge you even on that. Because if you're still doing it, if you're still being overly accommodating and you're still being too nice, it's usually driven out of fear. And if it's with a customer or a client, you're being too nice because you are afraid that they are going to leave you and that you're going to ultimately lose money. Um, and that fear is usually surrounded by the fact that you don't have enough customers or clients. And so you're like, if I'm too, if I, if I, if I push back or if I set boundaries, they're going to ask for a refund or they're going to leave me. And ultimately that's a huge challenge to overcome, but it's also one that you're going to face if you don't come to grips with what the, the, the real deal is behind being too nice. First of all, I need you to eradicate out of your mind this fear of losing something if you stand up for yourself, if you set boundaries, if you say no, if you set expectations. Doing those things and equating that with losing something naturally puts yourself in this mindset and it actually means that your mindset is based around something that isn't truly valid because if you're too nice and you're overly accommodating and you allow people to walk all over you and to push their boundaries and to go beyond those boundaries, you are losing something. You're losing their respect. And that is a huge downside of being too nice and being too accommodating. When someone doesn't respect you, they're most likely not valuing what you're doing. They're not going to see the benefits of what you're doing. And they're not ultimately doing anything but taking you for granted. And being taken for granted is a huge downside of being too accommodating and being overly nice. The other big downside of being overly accommodating and being too nice in business is that you're actually going to lose money because of it. So your mind puts you in this space where you are fearful that you're actually going to lose your job or lose a client or you know lose the, the, the opportunity that you have in front of you if you actually set boundaries. And that ultimately makes you believe that you're gonna lose money. But in reality, you're going to lose money anyway if you're too accommodating and if you are too nice because people are going to take advantage of you you're going to ultimately be doing a lot more work for the amount of money that you're actually to already told them you're going to charge them and so it's going to really boil down to yes being too nice is going to cost you more money than actually potentially losing that client and trust me in my 25 years of experience of first in the very beginning being overly nice and overly accommodating and now where i am i actually have never lost a client for setting boundaries. I've never lost a client for setting accurate expectations. I've never lost a client for saying no or for being assertive because the very nature of the business that we're in as coaches and consultants and as people who provide services to others is that they're hiring us in order to be an expert for them. And you lose confidence and respect in someone who's your expert that you're paying to be your expert, but they're out there acting like they don't really know how to set those boundaries and they can't tell you what you should and should not be doing. So nobody respects a yes man, right? Nobody respects a yes man. And ultimately that affects your desire to give them money, which then ultimately affects your ability to make money and then actually propels you into the sphere of actually losing the money that you've been being too nice in order not to lose. The second huge disadvantage of being and downside of being too nice and overly accommodating is that you are going to burn yourself out and experience a ton of overwhelm. Yes. 
If you don't set boundaries and you are overly nice, that means that you are doing way more than you should be doing. You are letting people push you into providing services, into providing advice, into doing things for them that you haven't agreed to do and that they haven't paid you to do. And when that happens, that means that you haven't actually planned for all of that extra stuff. And when you haven't planned for all of that extra stuff, you tend to do more work. So I found that when I was being overly accommodating in the beginning of my career out of fear, um, out of lack of confidence, out of having a little bit of imposter syndrome, all of those things were part of the reason why I was, I was working ridiculous amounts of hours, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. And those hours were in futility because I wasn't growing because of those hours. So it's one thing if you're working a lot in your business and you are actually seeing the fruits of that labor, right? You are propelling yourself into a growth trajectory and you are gaining from all of that work. But when you are simply working extra because you're too nice and you're too accommodating and you have not set boundaries, then you're not not seeing any fruits of that labor. You are literally just burning yourself out. You're going to experience a lot of stress. You're going to ultimately experience a lot of overwhelm. And that's going to set you back in your business and your entrepreneurial journey because you're not going to be able to move forward at the pace that you need to move forward in order to truly receive the benefits and to see that freedom that you really ultimately are trying to get to. And so being too nice is creating this horrible cycle of too much work, overwork, burnout, overwhelm, so I can't do anything, I need to rest. And then in that cycle, you're gonna be losing valuable time, again, like I just said, and ultimately losing money. And you're also going to stunt your own growth because as I just mentioned to you, nobody trusts, believes in, or has confidence in a yes man. And if you are always a yes man, they're not going to refer people to you. They're not going to really truly experience transformations and value out of what you're providing. They're not going to believe in you. And ultimately, they're not going to know, like, or trust you because you are too busy trying to accommodate them. And they, trust me, recognize that they're able to get one over on you and that you let them. I have to share with you my story about the reality of what was happening and a huge downside for me when I was being too nice all the time. Um, and it was actually in a career. I was in my nine to five prior to me really going out there and doing my business full time. Um, and it was a very stressful time because I had been working at an organization. I won't say any names because it is a national brand. And um, I've been working my butt off. My boss at the time had resigned. And so they put me in an interim role in this organization to kind of fill in for him. And and for six months, I was busting my butt because I thought I deserve this position. I deserve this role. And if I do my best and I make everyone happy, I can actually get an opportunity. And for six months, I did the job without um, any boundaries. I did the job without uh, any assertiveness. I did the job by letting people walk all over me, ask me to do things, not pay me for it, and give me this ridiculous interim title. But I thought that I was doing all of that to my own benefit. And so I actually ended up making myself so sick and overwhelming myself and burning out that I ended up in the hospital with an emergency surgery that was completely unexpected. And that meant that I had to be off of work for four to six weeks because back in the day, before all of this new stuff, it would take that long to recover from a surgical procedure. And while I was out on this medical leave, the human resource person who was a really good friend of mine called me and she was like, she is interviewing for your job. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, she decided to take the opportunity for you not to be here to start interviewing for the position that you want so badly. And I was like, you have got to be shitting me. And she's like, no, she's interviewing for it. And you're out for the next four to six weeks. And I was devastated. So I actually got myself up. It was, I had only been post-surgery maybe a week or two. And I got myself up. I got a dress. And I was like, absolutely not. I mean, I was that pissed off. And I went into the office. Um, and I asked to speak with the CEO because she was the one that was ultimately making the decision. And um, she gladly let me into her office. And I said, you know, this was really my first experience becoming more assertive. And I was like, I understand that you are interviewing for the position that I've been acting as the interim director of for the last six months and you're interviewing for it and I'm not even here and don't have the opportunity to interview. And she was like, well, 
what do you want me to do? And I was like, well, I didn't realize that you were actually looking and, and going to begin that process. I thought that I was just under a period of you testing whether or not I'd be a good fit. And, um, she was like, oh, I was absolutely always going to, you know, go outside of this organization for this position. And I was like, really? So why have I been doing the position? And she said, because you're a team player and you're doing a great job, but I don't think that you're going to be a good fit for the role. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you talking about? What you talking about? <laughs> and I was devastated. I turned to her and I go, why won't I be a good fit for the role? What makes you think that I wouldn't be a good fit? And she said, no lie. And, and I was devastated because this was an African-American woman who I looked up to, who I thought was a mentor of mine, who I thought, you know, had my back and really wanted to see me grow. And she looked me dead in my face and said, you know, I don't know how else to say this, but you're just not bitchy enough. And I at first was, you know, completely devastated. I was like, what do you mean? I'm not bitchy enough. And she was like, I don't know. You just kind of let people walk all over you. And in this director role, I need you to be in the forefront, telling people how to get it done, not uh, mincing words. And that's what you tend to do. And I was like, that's not true. I don't do that. You know, I'm, I'm a team player, like you said. And she was like, yeah, you're a team player, but you're not a leader. You're a team player that is in a good role and you're an amazing follower, but you're not a leader. And this is a director role and I need you to be a leader. I need you to lead the community. I need you to lead our volunteers. I need you to lead our board. I need you to lead the people in this organization towards what we need to accomplish. And it took me quite a while, some months. I mean, ultimately I did end up turning in my letter of resignation and moving on because I was that pissed. But I, after the years of hearing that those words over and over and over again in my head, realized that that was the best piece of advice that anybody had ever given me in my career. And she was a mentor being an African-American woman. And she was looking out for me because she was absolutely right. I was way too nice. I was afraid to be assertive. I wasn't putting myself out there and it was all related to my confidence and my belief in myself. And that simple fact that I was being overly too nice and I was being overly accommodated actually stunted my growth and prevented me from being able to get the director position that I had actually been doing for six months. And she ultimately did end up hiring a whole nother woman, bringing her in. That woman became my boss. And then they started asking me to train my own boss. And that is when I knew I was done. So now let's talk about the lessons that I have learned through that experience and through that story because they are really significant and I'm hoping to be able to provide you with some lessons that you really need to sit down and think about when it comes to why you need to manifest for yourself the confidence that you need in order to become less accommodating and feel empowered to speak up for yourself. The first lesson is that you have to begin to grasp the fact that your time time is valuable and that your experience is valuable. That's the first lesson. Um, you have to recognize that asserting the value of your time and your expertise is 100% critical in being successful, especially as a coach or as a consultant in this industry. If you don't value your time, then it's going to be very difficult for you to get someone else to understand the value of your time. So the first step in really honing in on this lesson is you've got to master your time. You've got to become the master of your time in order to recognize the value yourself. And until you become the value, until you begin to recognize the value of your time yourself, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to make sure that you are expressing to other people in an assertive way and not in a people pleasing way that, look, my time and my expertise is valuable. I deserve to be paid for those things. And if you can't respect that, then you and I don't necessarily have a good opportunity to work together any further. Right. And 
if you want some insight, because if mastering your time is a major issue for you, then I actually have tons of video on time management. I'm going to go ahead and link to one of my favorite ones right here. I actually have done a boot camp around mastering your time because once you begin to employ some real true time management techniques and tactics into your life and into your business, you will very clearly and very easily see how important managing your time is. You'll literally begin to see your schedule as the action packed dynamic script day to day that it is and you will begin to definitely hold people accountable for valuing that time and valuing that expertise and that was the first lesson that I learned from that scenario was you know she just kept pouring things on me and giving me more work in that six month time frame and I was just doing it and doing it and working ridiculous amounts of hours until I ended up in the hospital and that was a clear lack of value in my own time and in my own expertise I wasn't setting boundaries for that with her. I wasn't setting boundaries for anybody in that scenario and ultimately it ended up costing me. So that's a huge lesson. Time and expertise equals money and equals something that you need to make sure that you are speaking up for yourself about. Lesson number two is that I began to realize after that scenario that Being assertive and not letting people walk all over you does nothing but build respect and credibility. It doesn't make you mean. It doesn't mean that it's people are losing respect for you. It actually builds that respect and builds that credibility. And the number one thing that consultants and coaches have to have in order to be successful, in order to be a six or seven figure entrepreneur in that realm is respect and credibility. The very essence of letting people walk all over you, of not having the ability to set boundaries, of not setting expectations, and of not being the expert telling people what needs to be done means that you are literally less credible and less worthy of respect. And consultants are high ticket enterprises. Consultancies and coaching businesses are high ticket enterprises. People are literally paying you for your expertise and for your guidance. And they're going to be paying you a pretty penny, sometimes upwards of a hundred to five hundred to seven hundred dollars per hour. It's true. And do you want to pay somebody $500 an hour that you don't respect or that you don't find credible? I'll give you a second to think about that. Yeah, exactly. I didn't think so. So being overly accommodating is actually undermining that respect and credibility. And you, my love, got to get that all the way together. The third lesson that I learned from my experience that I just shared with you is that healthy communication and collaboration are valuable and important. Yes, Um, there is a huge significance in open and honest communication in business and in your business relationships and collaborations. And if you aren't open and honest in those communications, the people that you are talking to or working with recognize that right? Most people are not stupid. People recognize when you are just kind of going along with the flow and when you really don't feel what you are saying. That in essence means, and I would interpret that just as you would and the average person would as this person is a little bit of a liar. Why are you always lying? Right? I don't really trust what they're saying. And if you don't have open and honest communication, then you are not going to be able to be sought after for your expertise. And most people value people who are open and honest in their communication and direct because it is a rare indication that people have the ability to problem solve, right? Obviously, when you are being hired as an expert, as a consultant or as a coach, people are hiring you because they have a problem and they believe that you have the expertise to help them fix that problem. You, in essence, are a fixer. And if you aren't open, and honest in your communication and you're just a yes person and you're just nodding and you're just accommodating and you're just letting people walk all over you and just be too nice, then the interpretation is this person can't possibly have the ability to solve my problem. So therefore I don't want to pay them because they're not really an expert. They're more of a yes man and I'm not going to pay nobody to surround myself with yes people. And so not having healthy communication and collaboration in the way that you function in business by being too nice is ultimately going to be to your detriment. And it is a huge lesson that I learned through what I thought was one of the most horrific experiences in my life, but it was actually one of the most transformational. 
The fourth lesson that I learned from that transition, right, when I was going to being too nice, and then I was like, uh uh, I don't care to be known as the nice girl in business, is I had to learn how to embrace constructive conflict. Um, and it was a big lesson for me because I think for me, I was raised, um, and this might be getting a little too personal, but I promised that I was going to be a little bit more transparent with you guys. I was raised in a um, abusive household, okay? And um, being raised in that kind of an environment prompts you to naturally want to eliminate conflict and to avoid it at all costs. And so believe it or not, from a very young age, I learned how to be the peacekeeper. I felt like if I was perfect and that things weren't awry, that somehow, you know, the abuse would stop. And I realized later on in life after, you know, some definite in touch with myself and introspection that I didn't have any power over the abuse. The abuse was the disease. The abuse was the problem. Alcoholism was the disease. And that's what prompted it. And nothing that I could have done would have changed that. And once I began to realize that and deal with those demons in my own life, I began to understand and embrace constructive constructive conflict. Con not all conflict is bad. Not all conflict will, will garner negative results. Not all conflict is going to put you in a negative space or actually harm you. There is a such thing as constructive conflict. And the ability to master and embrace that is huge when it comes to being too nice versus being assertive and being successful in business. Especially as a woman, it is extremely important. So if you can't embrace constructive conflict, then you are limiting yourself when it comes to decision making. You are limiting yourself when it comes to problem solving because conflict often emerges when there is a difference of opinions, right? Or when people see things differently or there's different points of view. And if you are avoiding that, that means that you are not even open to receiving any other outside ideas. And those outside ideas can really change the game for you and help provide you with some clarity around how to solve your problem. Because if you knew the answer, it wouldn't be a problem. And so the very avoidance of that conflict limits your ability to actually engage in critical discussion and in critical decision making and problem solving that means that you can't really develop that skill set and get those abilities. So oftentimes I notice, even with team members of mine or colleagues or people that I coach or work with, or even people that I do consulting work for, is that one of the biggest and most high paying opportunities out there is if you are a problem solver. People want to make sure that they have problem solvers in their lives. And ultimately, when you're a coach or a consultant, that's what people are paying you for to fix their problems. And so if you avoid conflict, if you stay in that space, it is very difficult for you to, um, you know, end up with good decision-making abilities and good decisions because ultimately you're avoiding that critical conversation that needs to take place, which you have now interpreted as conflict. So that is ultimately constructive conflict and you need to embrace that um, in order to avoid being too nice in business. And another thing that you will really experience if you don't embrace constructive conflict is damaged relationships and trust, right? Damaged relationships. People just won't trust you. I've talked about that. I'm not going to keep jumping on that bandwagon. But in essence, when people believe that you are just saying yes, just to be saying yes, or you really don't believe what you're saying, or, you know, they can detect that because ain't nobody stupid. I, I know I hate it. Um, then when conflict is handled poorly in that respect, then it can strain your relationship. So there's a difference between being an um, and being somebody who can ultimately handle conflict very well. And you have to be able to master that in order to be able to, to move forward in success and in business, but to also be taken seriously and to ultimately be seen as someone who is trustworthy and who is capable of getting shit done. So now let's talk about some strategies, right? I want to make sure that I'm talking about some strategies for balancing kindness and assertiveness. But before I do, if you are enjoying this and if you are feeling me, please make sure that down below you give me a comment and say, hell yes, yeah, CP, I am feeling you, CP. And then also make sure you give me a like because that helps the algorithm and that helps this channel. So the strategies. All right. You know, I just want to make sure that you are aware that it is possible to be assertive without being mean. Right. It is. And the people who have mastered that balance are the people who go the furthest in this world, who get the most accomplished. <laughs> it is absolutely 100 percent possible and it's important. So 
here's some things that I would say that will help you balance that and to actually be able to be assertive without sacrificing kindness. For number one, set clear boundaries and expectations. Clearly communicate your expectations with your clients, with your colleagues, with people that you are engaged with, with people that you are on boards with. Um, terms, make sure that you set the expectations, the terms of the engagement. Um, what you're what you're gonna do what you're gonna provide what happens if they want more all of those things you have to set in the very beginning and that's a part of the reason why I love onboarding processes that are very specific and very strategic that's why I specialize in creating those processes because it is a big deal and that's the stage especially with customers and clients that you will begin to set those expectations and boundaries and that is a 100 percent surefire strategy of how you can make sure that you're being assertive but you're also being kind and getting the job done because setting those boundaries and setting things expectations up front manages people's expectations and 100 percent helps you avoid the conflict the second strategy is to practice active listening and empathy the number one way to be assertive is to listen. Listen to the song here in my heart. Um, believe it or not, it, it, it may feel counter productive and it may feel like it's the opposite but you have to listen first because most people will value your opinion even if it is a differing opinion if it makes sense and your opinion won't make sense if you haven't really heard what's happening very clearly so if you are not an active listener that is a skill set that I want you to prioritize working on put that on your little notepad my love practice active listening because active listening and empathy meaning putting yourself in the other person's shoes in order to understand where they're coming from and in order to address what's being said is the most critical piece of having emotional intelligence and it is not a buzzword it is reality and when you have emotional intelligence you can very easily be assertive but at the same time be perceived as being nice and kind and knowledgeable and those skills, my love, will make you big bucks, especially in business. The third strategy that I would recommend is uh, when you are giving feedback, right? Use I statements. Make sure that you're saying I. That helps you to put it in perspective and take the onus on what you're communicating. Because most of the time, we are communicating based upon our own experiences and how we feel. That's the only way that we can communicate, right? And when you're doing that in business and you're using I statements, you avoid the you. You avoid the you are doing this. And when someone hears you say you are doing this, then it truly makes them feel like you are accusing them of something and that you are being accused accusatory um, and then it's just not going to work for them so that puts people in defense mode and that ultimately doesn't help you be assertive and still come across as being kind it helps you be assertive but then also help you come across as being kind of an about it and being an asshole is not what you want to accomplish especially in business when it comes to your clients or your customers or people that you're working with or colleagues so using I statements is a huge strategy when you're getting ready to say something when you're getting ready to provide an opinion when you're getting ready to give feedback Frame it around your own experience because people are interested in other people's stories and they're more likely to hear it, but they are going to 100% shut down if you start saying you, 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 and then you're not going to get anywhere and you're going to ultimately undo the whole, I'm trying to be kind, but assertive thing that you work. And another strategy, and this is one of my favorites, is to practice self-advocacy and self-care. Um, if you are one of those people that has a hard time prioritizing self-care in your life, then I want you to work on that. And I mean things that are self-care. Get your hair done, get your nails done, prioritize yourself. Do not put yourself last. And I know it's hard to do and it's much easier said than done, but you have to do that because the very act of practicing self-care begins to build your confidence and your ability to advocate for yourself. Nobody in this planet in my life, I don't care who you are, can stop me from getting my hair done or stop me from getting my nails done. Those are things that are 100% 
imperative in my ability to feel good about myself. And so I don't let things interrupt that. I just don't. I just say, I'm going to do this. And I grew up in an environment where sometimes those things were frowned upon and I might actually have people in my life that would say to me, oh, that must be nice and, and hating. And so I, I, for a long time, was not that self-advocate. And then I realized that don't serve no purpose and that doesn't help anybody. And it definitely doesn't help me give to others. And so if you start practicing little notions of self-care more frequently, Frequently, that self-advocacy that you need in order to be assertive and kind in business at the same time will naturally emerge and you will be on the right track. And my final strategy that I would tell you and piece of advice that I would give you is to always seek win-win solutions. And that means that you have to have the ability to compromise. You have to have the ability to compromise and negotiate. Um, the ultimate goal is to get across your opinion to provide that feedback to make sure that the solution is one that is agreeable by all parties. And that's important, right? You have to be coachable yourself. You have to be able to compromise yourself, but you ultimately are also looking for something that everybody can come to an agreement on. And that's a win-win. That's the goal. The goal should never be to win over someone else or to beat someone out or to always be right. The goal has to be Let's come up with a solution that we can both be happy with. That is the art of negotiation. And that in itself will ultimately help you continue to be more assertive, to set those boundaries, but to also come across as an expert who is kind and knowledgeable and deserves to be paid for that kindness and that knowledge. So after everything I just said, I have to let you know the positive things that I've experienced in my life after making the shift from being too nice in business to actually feeling comfortable being a lot more assertive. Um, one of the first things is I'm a lot less stressed out. And if you begin to practice this, you too will be a lot less stressed out. I'm a lot less stressed out. I'm a lot less overwhelmed. I actually started making more money, working smarter, not harder. Um, and I also began to attract more leadership roles and attract more clients, more colleagues, more people into my life who respect assertiveness and who were also going to be very honest in their communication with me. Um, and I have actually had some really impactful and positive influence on my children as they have grown because it is important to not let people walk all over you and to be able to have those boundaries and I can tell you that by embracing some of the things that I've been talking to you about today and instituting those in the way that I do business the way that I am in leadership roles the way that I sit on my boards the impact and the feedback that I provide um, it has really grown my children and taken them to the next level and I feel has equipped them with the ability to be able to to survive in life and learn that true skill set. So with all of that being said, my love, I really want to encourage you to reflect on your own behavior. Um, and definitely consider all of the things that I talked to you about today. And really sit back and write out a pros and cons list, right? Write out a pros and cons list. What are the benefits, as we talked about today, of setting boundaries and asserting yourself? And really truthfully, what are the cons, right? What are the pros and what are the cons? I think that once you do that, you will realize that your pros list is way longer than the cons list. And then you can begin to take some of those strategies that I've shared with you today and institute them in your life and ultimately watch your entire experience change and grow. Now I get it. Every Everybody goes through it and you have to but if you're not learning from it and if you are not getting to a point where you feel more comfortable being a little bit more mean for lack of a better word then you are definitely going to limit your opportunity for growth your opportunity to make money and your ultimate entrepreneurial dreams of freedom and until next time my loves thank you so much for joining me if you want to learn about the time that I got good at being a she boss then go ahead and check out this video here but i want to make sure that you know until next time i will see you soon stay safe bye bye Mwah!